At the beginning of 2020, I started to use a bullet journal-inspired agenda that I adapted to the constraints of Rocketbook's reusable and scannable notebooks. And after 16 months, I'm glad I did, because it's helped me to stay organized and reduce the anxiety associated with getting on task at the beginning of each day. So in this video, I wanted to provide a brief update on how my agenda has evolved and highlight some of the more important details of bullet journaling in the Rocketbook ecosystem. The first change has been the actual notebook that I'm using. I'm still working with a Rocketbook because I really like their approach to hybrid physical digital note taking, but since the summer of 2020, I've switched from using the sidebound Rocketbook Fusion to the top bound flip notebook. As I've said in previous videos, I really like the flip because its top bound design prevents my palm from bumping against the coil while writing, which is a particular problem when using the smaller executive size notebooks. Otherwise, the Rocketbook system is great because you can write, scan, erase, and reuse the notebooks, then use the companion app or a synchronized cloud service to view your previous entries. However, if you want to avoid the pilot friction ink from staining the pages of your notebook, it's still best to erase the scans within a month, which has limited me to using weekly templates instead of the more elaborate monthly and annual trackers that are used in the original bullet journaling method. But I think there's a good point to be made here, which is that you shouldn't feel bound to copying every aspect of this or any other bullet journaling templates that you find. One of the most important things I've learned is to let the templates evolve and give myself the freedom to experiment with new ideas. For me, this has meant letting go of the inspiration section of my task page and pivoting the habit tracker from a vertical layout to a horizontal one. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm an advocate for using ultra fine tip permanent markers to create templates in Rocketbooks because I think that they add a lot of value. But I still haven't made all of my agenda pages permanent because I think it's important to give yourself a lot of time to work with the layout before you set it in stone, or in this case, in a synthetic polyester composite notebook page. I'll leave a link to my template in the description below, but here's a quick walkthrough. My bullet journal begins with a very simple task list, which is really just a header followed by some free space that I use to bullet out important items for the week that haven't yet been assigned to a particular day. Following this, I have a habit tracker, which I use to document my sleep, water consumption, and progress towards the five or six habits that I'm currently paying attention to. Then I have my weekly agenda, which is spread across two pages, giving me room for eight to 10 distinct tasks each day. Here I've kept the same vertical day and date indicators that I used in this template when it was in my sidebound notebook to take advantage of the dead space that was near the binding, because I still like the aesthetic, and by keeping this information on the side, I get a little more vertical space in each day. And finally, I leave an unformatted page at the end of my agenda to capture any rough notes or lists that otherwise would find their way onto a sticky note. And that's it. The biggest challenge I've faced has been keeping up with documenting and erasing my agenda at the end of each week. I keep two copies of my bullet journaling template back to back to allow me to plan events one week in advance. Any events further than that just live in my Google Calendar. And while my intent was to scan and upload every Sunday evening, more often than not, I end up procrastinating the scanning process and instead uploading two weeks worth of notes at a time. Clearly time management is something I'm still working on, but I found that making my templates permanent has been a big help. In a regular notebook, time is required to draw out each section of the journal. But if you're using a Rocketbook notebook, you also need to allocate time for scanning and erasing the agenda in order to save your notes and start over. So by using permanent ink to lock in the template pages, the layout remains after you scan and wipe the page clean, which saves you from having to redraw it each time. Then you can reallocate the time that would have been spent drawing template pages to scanning and erasing. Like I said, it's a work in progress, but gradually I'm simplifying my workflow. Similarly, it's important to consider how you'll organize the digital backups of your weekly journals. With the Rocketbook system, you can pre-configure seven destinations, each of which corresponds to a different icon at the bottom of the page. Then, once scanned, your file will be sent to the cloud location that corresponds to the icon that you checked off. It may not seem like a big time saver, but having a destination saved for regular use is actually really nice. 
I've assigned my first icon to correspond to a bullet journal folder in my Google Drive so that each week I can batch scan my agenda pages and they get combined into a single PDF that gets sent to that folder. And while there are many ways that you can name these weekly uploads, I've opted to use a consistent titling format that lists the year followed by the week number. This may seem a little abstract, but it allows the files to appear chronologically when they're sorted by their name, which is how I typically view my Google Drive. Having said that, to make it a little bit easier to find old journal entries, I've started adding the month name in parenthesis at the end, if that week contains the first day of the month. And this seems to work well. It's also worth noting here that I embed my title between two sets of double hashtags so that I can use the Rocketbook app's Smart Titles feature, which can be enabled under Settings, Handwriting Recognition, and that way, the title usually gets recognized during the scanning process, which saves me from having to write the whole thing out again when naming the digital file. Once the PDF is saved, I can either access it from the Google Drive or using the scan history within the Rocketbook app. Again, using the handwriting recognition settings, you can enable Smart Search to allow you to search the content of your old files, which is handy if you need to figure out when something happened, but you don't want to flip through all of your old journals to find it. You can also select the History dropdown at the top of the app to filter your scans by the destination icons, which then provides you with a chronological view of only the files that have been sent to that single destination, something that's handy if you want to filter out any other notes you took during the same time period. The only problem with relying too much on your Rocketbook app scan history for viewing your bullet journal entries is that they're only saved locally. So if you have the Rocketbook app on multiple devices, you'll only be able to see the scans made on that device. Hopefully cross-device history will be added to the app eventually, but for privacy reasons, they don't offer it at this time. So until then, it's a good idea to keep your weekly agendas organized in a backup destination as well. If this video has sparked your interest in tackling a new creative project, like bullet journaling, you may be interested in today's video sponsor, Skillshare, which you can join for under $10 a month with an annual subscription. The Skillshare catalog includes thousands of ad-free classes on a wide variety of topics, so it's easy to find something that interests you. Then you can learn online and at your own pace. If you're looking for something to complement your bullet journaling endeavors and want to embellish your templates a little, I can recommend Jessica Owinio's Learn to Hand Letter class, which takes you through the basics of things like the anatomy of lettering, building muscle memory, and developing rhythm, something that you could practice each week when developing your own bullet journal templates. And the best part is, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. The final bullet journaling tip I'll give is a very simple one, which is to try to check off a habit at the beginning of the day before you've even accomplished it in order to boost your motivation to see it through. I find that by filling in my habit bullet ahead of time, I'm more likely to actually accomplish it because I've committed to myself that I will, and if I don't, then additional effort is required to go back and erase the bullet in order to keep my habit tracker accurate. By doing this, you're also mentally preparing to accomplish the habit, and it changes your frame of mind from one of needing to earn a success point to one of not wanting to lose something that you've already earned which has been shown to be a more powerful mindset. And that's it. If you develop some templates and would like to share them, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.